Yeah, he's the presiding uh, minister over World Mission Outreach in um, Chicago. Uh, once again, this evening, please join me in welcoming to the podium, Reverend Ori Johnson. Give God some more praise. Give God some more praise wherever you are. God is awesome. He's been so good to us. When you just go through the testimonies a little, you know that indeed God has always been in this house. Give God some more praise, please, wherever you are. Amen. And just like Pastor said, thank you for coming out. The cold is a little bit, it's not, uh, uh, <laughs> it's not the DC type. This is, you borrowed it from Chicago. This is the real Chicago one. <laughs> but I'm glad that uh, you could pull through. And let me tell you this, for coming out, God will also respect you. Give me a bigger amen. amen. I like, I like, I like, I like this house because I believe you are people of faith. So just give me a bigger amen. amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Consider. Now I'll just be quick because of our time. Just as the testimonies were going on, I remember that old song. I'll just sing it briefly. Can I have help? Very old song. I'm a, I belong to the oldies sometimes, so something about the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Jesus, you're a wonder. Lord, deliver me tonight. Amen. Forgive me now. Okay. You will still help me. Right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, 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 don't laugh at them. They are in their time. And we enjoy them. Were you not enjoying them when they were leading? And I do. But uh, sometimes uh, I'm taken back to the days of old. And I remember a few things. And uh, I like to just stare myself with that. Hello. You helped me, right? Jesus, you are a wonder. Jesus, you are a wonder. Jesus, you're a wonder, you're a wonder to my soul. Jesus, you're a wonder. Jesus, you're a wonder. Jesus, you're a wonder. You're a wonder to my soul. Listen. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. You're a wonder to my soul. Everybody. Jesus is a wonder to your soul. Can I see you? Come on, let's take it. Jesus, you're a wonder. If you listen to all the testimonies, you know that it is all, it can only be Jesus. Oh, you're a wonder. One more time, Jesus, you're a wonder.
the testimonies in the house just took me back. Because if I, I can't analyze them, but each of them pointed to one fact. It could only be Jesus. If it has not been the Lord who is on our side. Can we have all these testimonies? No. You could pray and shake and do all. And if the Lord refused to show mercy, you can't quarrel him on his seat. He's been on his throne. He remains God. Even when you frown, he remains God. Praise the Lord. He said, I will have mercy, a woman will have mercy. So thank God he chose to show you mercy. Can you imagine somebody wanting to buy a house and say, hey, you go pray. Come on. Does that make sense? For boldness in the spirit. Go, pray. Come back to me. And then the poor little girl began to hear a voice. <laughs> Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Nights like these are nights I am tempted to shout, but I will just be cool tonight. Let's look at the word. I'm very excited, sincerely, not just because I'm here. I'm very excited about what God is doing with you. I'm sincerely excited. And it gives me a greater push. It gives me something to hold on to him that many more things will be happening for you. Come on, give me a bigger amen. amen. I'm privileged to share and fellowship with you on this special night. Haven't you tarried and waited on God and sought the Lord to come together at this time to give him thanks? It is a demonstration of your faith. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at Habakkuk. Thank you, Father, for your word. Bless every life. Lift everybody. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 3. Just because of time, I would like to place a few scriptures so that we can now put them together. Habakkuk chapter 3, first of all. Are we there? We will all read together just one verse. Verse number 17. Habakkuk 3, 17. One, two, go. Let's repeat it, everybody. One, two, go. Then verse eighteen. Now, now, it's not, it's not, it's not as solid as I want. That first word, say it loud. Come on now. Say it again. Yes. Yet. I wish it can be heavier. Yes. Woo! <laughs> now that emphasizes something that which I want to bring across. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fall and the fields shall yield no meat. Now, all of these descriptions are strange things. Are you with me? The fig tree is supposed to blossom. Now, 
these are normal natural things. Are you with me? But in this case, the word says even if the normal natural things will not happen, the expected, it is expected that the labor of the olive will not fall. It is expected that the fields you yield meat. It is expected that the flocks should not be cut off from the fold. It is expected that there shall be head in the stalls. These are natural expectations. Are you with me? But the Bible says here that even if it happens the other way around, even if it happens the other way around. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Now, this word is for men and brethren that have labored and that are laboring in prayers. People who love the Lord enough to seek his face. Time and time again, you call upon his name. Am I right? Time and time again, you cry. Time and time again, you seek his face. And do you know that by measure of your seeking, by measure of the way you, you, you have come before God in prayers, and by reason of what you know from the word of God, it is expected, it is expected that you have results. It is expected that you see things happen. It is expected that things turn around. But guess what? Sometimes you go through three years and things seem not to turn around. The olives, are you with me? Are not behaving the way they are supposed to behave. Hello, are you still with me? Let me, let me just show you something. A translation puts it this way. Simpler simpler English in the over things things we are very familiar with. He said, though the cherry trees don't blossom and the strawberries don't ripen. Now we are very familiar with strawberries. Am I right? Imagine you go to <laughs> to the store to buy some stuff. You want a good one. Now he says though the apples are warm eating Nobody wants something that is bad. And the wheat fields stunted. Though the sheep pens are shipless. And the cattle bands are empty. Out of all of that, even if all this is happening, I am singing joyful praise to God. I am turning cartwheels of joy to my Savior God. Counting on God's rule to prevail. I take heart and gain strength. I run like a deer. I feel like I'm king of the mountain. Can I talk to somebody? Today is the day you are going to register yourself on the side of the Lord and say, I will never worry for anything anymore. Come on, come on. Give me a bigger amen. amen. Sister, I'm talking to you. Give me a bigger amen. From now on, I will rejoice in the Lord at all times. No matter what I see with my two eyes. My eyes may be seeing something different from what is expected. Are you with me? But I will rejoice in the Lord. Remember that? Dance, we used to dance in those days and say, I will rejoice. And you will be glad. I will extol your love more than wine. Draw me unto you and let us dine together. I will rejoice and you will be glad. Amen. Some people still know that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't mind me, okay? <laughs> now, what I'm trying to say is that time and time again, you need to encourage yourself and say that, no matter what I see, no matter what is coming around me, no matter what is happening, I am focused on one thing 
And that is, I will rejoice. Now, why am I rejoicing? Why am I rejoicing? I've been prayed and prayed, and yet I'm not seeing things that I'm supposed to see the way I need to see. Why am I rejoicing? Your rejoicing is a demonstration of your faith. Are you with me? The Bible says, he that cometh to God must first of all believe that he is God. Am I right? Hebrews 11. The B part. Must first of all believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. So if I've spent time seeking God over time, that God will reward me. God is a rewarder. And if God is a rewarder, he can't fail in his reward. Come on, say that amen loud. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's the, that's the word. So you've been seeking God diligently. Hence, he's going to reward you. Tonight is one night you are demonstrating that faith. You're saying to God, Lord, I've been seeking you. And I know you're going to do your own part. But I'm going to go ahead and rejoice in you. I'm not going to sit looking out through the window and watch out for when the result will come. Hello? Are you still with me? Remember what that young little guy did when Elijah told him, go, check it, check it out. Remember that? Everybody knew that there was no rain. But yet, Elijah said, I had something. I had something. So he told the young man, go check it out. The young man went out, checked and came back and said, sir, I saw nothing. He said, well, you're not saying, you're not lying. But what you saw is nothing. But I had something. I had something. Now you go back again and check again. Listen. The God you and me serve is beyond human calculations. I thought I would have an amen there. It's beyond because the human reasoning will go out there and come back and report that there is nothing. Right? The young man came and reported the truth. There was nothing. But Elijah said, I know who spoke to me. I know what I had. I had something. Go back. He went back over and over. The Bible said at the seventh time, the same young man who saw nothing came back and said, ah, now I'm seeing something like the what? Like the end of a man. I'm seeing something. Out of the nothing, something came out. Can I speak to your spirit this morning? Can I speak to somebody here? In as much as you have been seeking the Lord, in as much as you have been waiting on God, your God cannot fail you. I say your God cannot fail you. Whatever it will take for him to walk things out, he will walk it out. You will shout in this house. You will declare his testimony. Come on, somebody say that amen louder. Let me show you a scripture that makes me just, why am I so excited? In Psalm 111. Psalm 111. I'll read from the Message Bible very quickly. I just want to bring us something. He said, I give thanks to God with everything I've got. Now, because that's the attitude I want you to put up in this great moment. Wake yourself up Shake yourself up and say, Lord, I've been seeking you. I've been praying. 
The only way I can demonstrate the fact that I believe is to dance and to, and to bless you. But when you are thanking God, I want you to do it with everything you've got. Everything you've got. Everything. Every strength of yours should go ahead and bless the Lord. So wherever good people gather and in the congregation, God's works are so great. Everybody has been testifying that. What a lifetime of study. That's what interests me there. The work of the Lord, the way God does his things, is what a lifetime of study. For all of your life, you can study the acts of God. You can never, you can never finish it. May God continue to shock and surprise your life. Oh, come on, give me a big amen there. I say, give me a big amen there. Thank God I'm not just, see, this message was set before the testimonies. The people that were giving the testimonies didn't know what I have to share. Are you with me? But what they were sharing shows to you that God's works are numerous. And if you go studying each one of them, you will keep studying and studying and studying. All of your lifetime, you can't finish studying the work of God. May God continue to expound his work in your life. Let your lifetime experience more of God. Oh, somebody give me a bigger amen. It says, a lifetime of study, endless enjoyment, splendor and beauty mark his craft. Splendor and beauty mark his craft. Mark his craft. Splendor and be when he is crafting something, when he is creating something, when he is making something, splendor and beauty, something is unique about God's act. May you wake up the next day, the next week, the next month in the crafts of God. Oh, come on now, give me a big amen. Give me a big amen. I'm excited today because somebody will roll in next week, next week with a bigger testimony about the acts of God, about the craftings of God. Let God create something anew. Even if it has not happened to anybody before, may you be the unique person. I say, may you be the unique person. May you be the next person to showcase the craft of God. I'm talking to you. May your life be the next one to showcase the act of God, the craft of God, the working of God in his splendor, in his beauty. Oh, give me a shout of amen. amen. Hear this. And I love this one. It says his generosity never gives out. His miracles are his memorial. His miracles are his memorial. Why do God perform miracles? That is why he has always engaged you. You're a partner. That's why you are busy praying. Because he gets you involved. Are you with me? So that he can showcase himself. His miracles. Why you partner with him? When he demonstrates himself, his miracles are his memorial. He does things that will stay through time. May you be the next one to build the next memorial for God. Oh, no, no, I didn't get that. I said, may your life be the next one to set up a memorial. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. You can be the next saint what? Give your name to it. Uh-huh. You think you're not qualified, you're qualified. The acts of God will make you a memorial. They will look at you, they will read about you and say, when sister so and so was alive, she saw God in this fashion. Is it not possible? That's what God intends to do with you. And that's what God is going to do with you. While you keep praising him, while you keep worshiping him, while you keep thanking him, he will continue to perform more miracles in your life. Miracles are real. 
they will not, they are not, they are not, they are not, they are not a yesterday story. Miracles are real. They are still happening now. They may have different tags and different formats, but God is still God. Come on, somebody give, agree with me and say that amen loud. Let me finish with this. This God of grace, this God of love, he gave food to those who fear him. He remembered to keep his ancient promise. He proved to his people that he could do what he said. Hand them the nations on a platter. A gift. He manufactures truth and justice. All his products. This is what stirs my bones. All his products are guaranteed to last. Never out of date. All his products are guaranteed to last. Mama, 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 mama. While you seek him day to day, while you ask day and night, I want you to know what God is going to produce for you is guaranteed, sealed and signed. A stamp from the Holy Ghost, a stamp from heaven. They are guaranteed to last forever. House, we will continue to bless the Lord because what he is doing for us are guaranteed stuff. God ain't doing any fake thing for us. God will not provide any fake miracle for you. God is not providing anything weak. What he is going to do and what he will keep doing for you are guaranteed things because all his products, they don't die. They don't, they don't fade. Say that amen loud. Never obsolete. They are rust proof. Rust proof. All that he makes and does is honest and true. He paid the ransom for his people. He ordered his covenant. He ordered his covenant kept forever. He's so personal and holy. Worthy of our respect. The, God, the good life begins in the fear of God. Do that and you will know the blessing of God. Somebody say hallelujah. His hallelujah lasts forever. I say his hallelujah lasts forever. May your own hallelujah continue to flow. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. As you continue to bless the Lord, let God cause your hallelujah to flow. Your hallelujah, let it flow, let it flow. No hindrances. No hindrances. Do you know why I really am so excited about this great God and his acts? And why we must praise him? Now, just do a comparison for me. Go back to Daniel. Remember, you know the story of Nebuchadnezzar. I don't want to go over it. Okay? Can you just read verse 15 of chapter 3 and verse 28? Verse 15, Daniel chapter 3. Do I have the King James? King James version? Can we all read it together? Verse 15. One to go. Hear that language. Who is saying that? Who is what? Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? If you worship not, you shall be cast into the same. You shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fire. That was a threat of a king. And he said, who is that God? Now, 
Read the next verse. The one I said, no, not 16. 28. Read just 28. Because I'm not going through the whole story. Just 28. Everybody. Are you sure you're seeing what I'm seeing? Huh? What did here in 20, just from verse 15 and verse 28, what did the same king say here? He said, blessed be the God of Shadrach. Now, if Nebuchadnezzar can worship this God, then you have to worship him more. Because ordinarily he is not qualified. Am I talking to somebody here? Hello? He's not qualified. But suddenly something happened. He said, hey, blessed be the God. Ah, the same God he was talking about. Are you with me? He said, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? I, I used to have a simple theory. As far as I'm concerned. Those three kids will have just easily been put in the fire. They will have easily gotten burnt. And they will have just gone to heaven. And heaven will receive them. Are you with me? Hello? Easily. Heaven will receive them. Because God doesn't lose, lose sleep over somebody who is beheaded and whatever. You're coming home. You're coming home anyhow. Whichever way, whether it was a motor accident or it was a, a persecution, dead or whatever, Stephen was martyred. He's coming home. Are you with me? God, he, he doesn't lose anything. So these three kids will have just gone. That's my theory. You don't have to agree with, on that. But guess what? When that question came from that king, say, who is that God? Now, that was too challenging. Am I talking to somebody here? No, no, no. I, am, I, am, I, am I making sense? Now, that was too challenging. say, who is that God? And you know, if there is anything God will ever do at any time for you, is to prove himself. If anything God will ever do at any time, is to explain himself. Are you with me? So, these three children will have easily died. But when that question came, who is that God? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost said, all right now. A meeting was made. Quickly, Son was dispatched right into the midst of the fire to ensure that he proved himself. Ama, ma, 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 ma. To ensure that he proved himself. As you continue to worship this, your God, I declare to you, ma, 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 ma. The ancient of days will continue to prove himself. Listen to me. Even in the most complicated cases where men can do nothing about, he remains your God. In as much as you have been lifting up his name, I stand here under his anointing to declare you will never, never be disappointed. Oh, come on, shout that amen louder. That is why you must change your gear in worship. Because if Nebuchadnezzar can say, blessed be God, then you should open your mouth and say, why that? Are you with me? You should be more crazy if Nebuchadnezzar, who has no inclination, who has no knowledge, he had no idea about this God, but suddenly saw a move, suddenly saw an action. Are you with me? That provoked him and said, ah, this God is the only one. You have seen God much more. Am I right? Come on now. Take your memory back five years. Go back ten years. You have seen God act for you at different times. 
It's enough for you to believe him again and again and again and again for the next day and for the next week and for the next month and for the next year. That is why this whole year you will not look back. You will not shake. You will not turn back because you will rejoice in the Lord. Time and time again. No matter what comes your way, you will rejoice in the Lord. You will continue expressing your faith. You will continue declaring that, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Nothing shall move me. Nothing shall shake me. No matter what comes my way, my God remains God. Can I have somebody in the house shout hallelujah? We're going to pray. I just want to make some declarations. I'll take this back to the main scripture of Habakkuk 3. Verse 19 says, The Lord God is my strength. Oh, I thought I would have an amen there. I'm coming from scriptures, you know, but what? Get this, get the line. He said, the Lord God is my strength. That's why I'm crazy about him. That's why I'm going to worship. That's why I'm going to praise him. Because he is my strength. I will face the next week. I will face the next issue. I will not break down. I'm not giving up. I have been made tough. He is my strength. Oh, I don't know whether you know anything about strength. It means that he's the one that pumps you up. When you're feeling weak, are you with me? He's the next dose. He's the one that gives you the next shot. And I declare to your life here, I declare to your works, I declare to the works of your hand that you will not lack strength. You will not lack strength. You will not lack strength. You will not lack strength for all the strength you require to daily, continually seek his face and wait upon him. You will have it. Shout amen, somebody. It's my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet. Oh, I like that. And he will, he will make me to walk upon my high places. This is your year. As you set to seek the Lord, get ready. Your feet is being taken care of. Your feet is being taken care of. He will make it like a hind's feet. I don't have the time to explain all that, but you know what I'm talking about. Hello. Your feet will be converted. That's what I'm talking about. There will be a conversion on your feet. Your steps will change. Where you go will change. Where you enter will change. The places you climb to will change. You belong to the high places. May God take you from strength to strength to strength to strength to strength to strength. I come this day under his anointing to disagree with the forces of darkness that says no to your moving forward. They say no to your achievements. They say no to your climbing onto greater heights. I stand under the anointing of God to break their shackles and to disagree with them. I declare upon you that today, as you worship the more, as you seek his face the more, week after week, may you climb and climb onto greater heights, onto greater mountains, onto greater strengths. Come on, somebody shout that amen louder. Mama, 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 mama. Wake up every morning in the joy of the Lord. Sing a new song every day. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And as you walk in that strength, may you enter into new territories. Uh, no, no, no. You didn't agree with me. I said, may you enter into new territories. You are seeking God. It's not in vain. You are coming to his presence. It's not in vain. Month after month, as you come tarrying, in this tarrying, in this tarrying, while you seek him, let showers fall on you. Oh, come on. Say that amen louder. Say that amen louder. Take this and I will close. I just want to make this declaration upon your life. From the book. 
So you know where I'm coming from. Praise the Lord. Psalm 146. From the message Bible says. Oh my soul praise God. All my life long I will praise God. Singing songs to my God. As long as I live. Say, so don't put your life in the hands of experts who know nothing of life. Is, am I talking to somebody here? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not against professionals, okay? Uh, don't abuse professionals here. You are doing your job. Stay in your professions. But always acknowledge that at the end of your profession, there is a God. Beyond your profession, there is a God. Amen. So, while you walk, while you labor, while you do the things that the limits of knowledge are permits, there is a God. So, you too, who, who is an expert, don't attempt to leave yourself in the works of your brain. Say, mere humans don't have what it takes. When they die, their projects die with them. Instead, get help from the God of Jacob. Am I talking to my friend there? Get help from the God of Jacob. Put your hope in God and know real blessing. Real blessing. I want to change the feeling of somebody here. I want to change the feeling of a sister here. I want to change the feeling of a brother here. There are real blessings in believing God, in trusting the Lord. Real blessings. God cannot lie. We have worked with him for a few years. I'm, I'm, recently, I was just reviewing a couple of things that God has been doing with me. I said, Lord, you know I've not started. I desire more. That's why I'm, so in, lo I'm, I'm in love with the theme of this, of the church for the year. Still in pursuit of God and his righteousness. I'm, I'm hungry. Are you with me? I made a review and I realize that I've been on, on pulpits for over 30 years. And yet I still am hungry for more. I don't know more. I want to know him more. I'm in pursuit of this God. And it's right. every other thing doesn't mean anything anymore for me. Hello. You know what I'm talking about. What have you not seen? In those days, you've not seen the United States. Now you've seen the United States. Talk to me now. Why are you behaving too holy? Some of you are fasting and praying, Lord, I got to be there. You fasted and fasted. Now you've seen White House. Does it change your hair? I have no money, Lord. I have no money, Lord. I have I need money. Some of you have money. Real good money. Are you with me? There's nothing you have not seen in this life. Hello? Hello? So no big deal anymore. You're not in some village somewhere where you're believing God on how to get to Washington, D.C. You're already in Washington, D.C. Praise the name of the Lord. So from this point on, let's just rest in the hands of the Lord. Come on, am I talking to somebody here? Every other thing, you've, you've eaten all kinds of food in this, in this country. All. First time you got excited about BMAC. Are you with me? The Boga Kings and so on, now you've rejected them. Come on now, talk to me. The same you that was so excited about Boga King and, you know, I remember the first time I had those stuff, man. You were feeling good that you were eating well. I didn't know I was eating poison. So there was a time I used to consume this Pepsi, you know. Pepsi tastes so good here. I tell you, many years ago, I will, at one sitting, I will, have, I, will, I will finish five cans of Pepsi. Excited, man. The, the feel was until one day, some. Someone opened my eyes to know that, hey, man, there's a lot of caffeine in. I said, Lord! 
joking with your blood pressure. From that day, I cut it off. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a health expert, okay? But what I'm trying to say is that you have eaten all manner of stuff. You've eaten, you've seen, you have done all kinds of nothing is new to you anymore. Now it is time for you to take your life back and just rest in the hand of the Lord. Am I talking to somebody here? And I'll close with this. <sighs> Said, put your hope in God and no real blessing. Say, God made sky and soil, sea, and all the fish in it. He always does what he says. He defends the wrong. He defends the wronged. He feeds the hungry. God frees prisoners. He gives sight to the blind. He lifts up the fallen. God loves good people. Protects strangers. Takes the side of orphans and widows. But makes short work of the wicked. He makes short the work of the wicked. God in charge. Always Zion God is God for good. Hallelujah. I came tonight to say just this, that God is in charge of your life. Come on, say that amen loud. God is in charge of your life. For that reason, you keep blessing him. You keep praising him. You keep worshiping him. Don't explain how uh, the strawberry trees should produce their fruits. Hello? Because we are, we are very mathematical. We are so knowledgeable. We know how to put two and two together. Hello? We want results in the fashions we want them. But guess what? God is not always programmed to answer your brain. Did I talk to somebody here? God will not always answer your brain. Your brain cells are limited to a, a given range of calculation. Hello. By this and by this measure, mm, I should have this result. Geometric measure, I should have this result. By arithmetic progression, I should have this result. That is the best your brain can handle. But guess what? The God you and me serve is bigger than your brain. He's bigger than the experts. He's bigger than everybody you can think about. He can still produce a new thing out of nothing. Oh, agree with me and say that amen loud. So that is why you should approach him all the time in thanksgiving, in praise, in worship as a demonstration of your faith. Because he that commit to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Your five years of seeking God shall never be in vain. Your ten years of waiting upon God shall never be in vain. He that did it before, he can do it again. Go back to your diary. You find a testimony six years ago. Go back to your archives. You find a testimony seven years ago. If he did it seven years ago, he will do it again and again and again and again. If you agree with me, shout that hallelujah louder. Forgive me that I'm shouting. In America, I don't like shout. I say, oh man, you're too loud. Can I help it? Ordinarily, if you meet me one on one, I'm a cool guy. I'm, I'm, I'm nice. No, but when I'm talking about his goodness, man, permit me to be a bit crazy for a minute. Hello. We are going to pray right now. And I will make some declarations over your life. But I want you to release your faith. But this time around, it's in the form of worship. Come on now. With everything you've got. Meaning your, your last strength should be given to God right now. Amen. We're not talking about money now. We're talking about what? Everything you've got. Can we get on our feet, everybody? In the next five minutes, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be down. Can I have the praise team? Now, they're going to lead us in two minutes worship. I want you to... See, they are good. They are experts. 
But I want you to bring out your faith. Let, you see, the Holy Ghost will see you. Amen. Angels are in attendance here. I'm still believing God that some issues that are still hanging around our homes will be settled this night. Oh, come on. Give me a big amen there. That I want us just to demonstrate faith in the form of worship. Are you with me? Now, two minutes. Give me some worship. Praise. Whatever you feel like. And let everybody please respond. Don't just respond to the fine music, the instruments. They are good. We need them. But bring us something from your spirit. I want the Lord to record something from you before I make my declarations. Please. Two minutes. demonstration of your feet. Stretch your hands in my direction. I hold you by your hand in agreement. Declare the things from your spirit as you have demonstrated your faith. Declare. 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 I agree with you. I agree with you. Declare. For your God is in this place. He is not tired performing miracles. The word says his, his works are always full of splendor and beauty. Let 
I hold your hand where you are. And I, under the anointing of God, declare upon your life. That your God that performs miracles that are real, miracles that are endures, miracles that are permanent, walk a special walk for you in this hour in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let every language that is against you bow. I said, let every statement that is against you bow. Under this anointing, in the name of Jesus, the power of God reintroduce you, explain you. Let the people that cost you, let the people that go against you, come back to join you to worship, join you to worship, join you to praise him. In the name of Jesus. As you continue in worship. As you continue to demonstrate your faith. The acts of God. Remain vivid. Remain vivid. The crafts of God. The crafts of God. Be real to your life. In the name of Jesus. For you name the name of the Lord. For you mention the name of the Lord. I declare upon your life. That your song be different. Your song be different. Come on. Your song be different. I release it upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Luzo Pradani Grababosata. Your song changed right now. You have come to the presence of the living God. You have come to the mount of God. For upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. You have come unto Jehovah God. Not unto any man. From the crown of your head From the crown of your head To the sole of your feet Lago sopra de moschi While they offer that song, if you feel like coming to the altar, come to the altar. If there's a deep burden in your heart, come to the altar. 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 While those at the altar said a couple of words unto God, I want you to worship. I want you to worship. I want you to worship from your spirit. Sorry, we've taken a little bit of your time, but please, this uh, this this solemn moment is so important. Shout it on the mountain. There is power. Those of you at the altar, stretch your faith and believe him for the now miracle, for the now miracle, for the now miracle, for the now miracle. There is power. Yaro tomo sopra dana malukoskiya.
you have declared that there is power indeed in the name of Jesus. I want you to rise to your feet and put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
the one who you, are, who, who you have directed all your worship and thanksgiving and praise to tonight, who has declared his word to you that he's in charge of your life. He's in charge of your life. Therefore, you can go out into this month and worship him. Put your hands together for Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word that has come for tonight, for your vessel that you've used. We give you all the praise and glory. We ask for an increase of the anointing upon your son's life in the name of Jesus. Take him higher, Lord, and refill him. Thank you forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. We thank God for what God has done tonight. Indeed, we could have wrapped up at the end of the testimonies and just gone home. But I know that we have gone over a little because this was what God wanted. Indeed, there's power in the name of Jesus. So I want you to go into this month worshiping the Lord. Go into this month praising the Lord. Knowing that your father is what? In charge. Say it together. My father is in charge of my life. Therefore, I'm free to worship. I'm free to praise. I'm free to give thanks. And that will be a portion in the name of Jesus. Please, I want to encourage you to continue in this attitude of prayer, praise, thanksgiving. 